Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and today this is well and truly the biggest build I'm probably ever going to be able to do on this account. Uh, so a lot of you have asked me to make a mammoth tank, and the first thing that comes to mind with a mammoth tank is that it's a quad-tracked tank with a turret that has two guns, or two cannons rather, and missile launchers. Now the problem with Crossout is that you need very specific parts to be able to do that, and unfortunately every design I tried was not capable of actually mounting that full weapon set, nor being able to move, in fact. So this is posing a particular problem for us, which is why this build only has a single fixed 88mm, but it does have a Cricket 17M. So this unguided rocket launcher is where the bulk of the firepower actually comes from. We can open up the enemy using the cannon to blast away a lot of the armor pieces on the side and then use the rockets to actually deal damage. And you can see there, we've actually managed to decimate our clone pretty quickly, which is a little bit worrying. It is a little bit worrying. And uh, so, this is going to be interesting with this build, and uh, I'm going to see what's what. Now, the, there is a caveat here, is that this vehicle, as you might expect, has a very, very high power score. In fact, it's 6,363. So that means we're most likely only going to be able to do PvE. Alright, here we are on a hard defense map, and... Uh, well, it's already underway, which is not ideal for us. Now, you might expect something like this to be particularly slow, but no, in fact, it actually is uh, quite maneuverable, surprisingly, for its size. It is partly due to the fact that, well, firstly, it's a Wyvern cabin, and it also has two powerful engines, which uh, definitely help with the weight limit quite significantly, so... So that's definitely something that's in our favor. Now obviously there are builds that you can see even in this match that are much bigger than this. And of course I would have liked to, but unfortunately the truck cabin that I needed for this is actually out of durability points and promo cards can't actually re replenish any of that stuff. So I'm kind of stuck with this, but it does look pretty cool and I'm kind of happy with the way it looks. So uh, it could definitely be worse. Alright, so trying to make this sort of a tank destroyer, really, with a sort of fixed turret. And, uh, this guy's having a go at, with, at us with his, uh, machine guns there. Those actually look like Vulcans, I believe, so, uh, that's interesting. Of course, this is not the ideal setup for a, uh, PvE. It, d it definitely doesn't have unlimited ammo like uh, a lot of these other vehicles do. You can see there with the machine guns and just the cannons as an auxiliary. So this is really a PvP vehicle, but you know, you'd be hard pressed to find a match above 5,000 power score. Alright, let's try to defend this pump jack over here. Oh, we've taken a nasty hit there. Alright, rockets away. Let's try and move away before they get a chance to really damage our sides there. And um, here we go, rockets. Well, that did less damage than I was expecting. There we go. And he's away. So we can sort of just help them by uh, significantly damaging them for the rest to sort of finish off. Oh, he got shunted out of the way before we could actually do what we needed to do. Alright, so let's move on. So, of course, the next wave will be at the next pump jack, so let's just move along there. It's interesting to see if we can actually keep up with uh, with some of the others as well. And uh, that hit we took it was actually a cannon shot, and it only damaged the front very slightly. That is a lot of armor that's up there at the front, so... Not surprised it actually didn't do da any damage to us at all. But of course, with a pull of 2,163 structure points, I think we're going to be quite alright. 
we're taking hits here. So let's just park up over here, turn around. Alright, we've got enemies coming in from the back. Firing there. And rockets away. Rocket's doing a lot less damage than I thought it would. And uh, let's try and finish this guy off. No, we can't get, get a shot out at him. Which is a, a bit unfortunate. Definitely. Alright, that was a good hit there. And now some of these bots do just sort of tend to just go back and forth trying to ram the thing. Oh, we've missed with the rocket salvo there. Oh, no, we didn't miss with the cannon though. I wonder how good this is at actually ramming things. Let's find out. Uh, as it turns out, not very, because the uh, blade wings don't actually touch them. So uh, that's a bit unfortunate. And we are running low on cannon rounds, unfortunately, so this is going to be over very, very quickly. But we only have one enemy left, so... For this wave, anyway, I think we'd be quite alright. Alright, so that was a defense mission. A hard defense mission, in fact, with this, and, well, we were running out of ammo very quickly towards the end there. It seemed to be quite okay, so I wonder how this will deal against the Leviathan. Alrighty, here we go, and uh, this is already not looking good, because we do have a couple of vehicles here which are at 4,000 power score, but over there, Datsik 28S is in a little bit underpowered vehicle for this. He's in a 2,000 plus power score vehicle, uh, which is not what you want. Uh, let's... Get a shot there, and we've missed. Alright, he has stopped though. We get the rockets out, and we've got a couple of hits. Firing. And let's waiting for him to come around the corner. Some good hits with the rockets there. Alright, ready to finish him. Oh, just missed. Let's try and get the last shot in there. Oh, just a splash. Come on. Alright, good hits with the rockets there. Cannon hit, still not really doing the damage we need it to. Alright, it's 163 for that one. Alright, that one is done. But, uh... We've still got a lot of enemies to deal with right now. We do only have one respawn, as is typical of... Uh, PvE missions, and I do want to conserve my ammo, so I'm hoping the others can take out this... This thing, but the... Oh, the the ones attacking the attacking the base there is just yeah. All right, so that didn't go particularly well, and frankly, I don't think there's really much point to any of the others because as nice as I, I well as happy as I am with this build, there really isn't much you can do with it at this stage. Um, PVP with six thousand power score really isn't really very viable. And the, for a vehicle of this size, it is a very big target. It's also not particularly well armed for what it is. So, uh, not really sure what else. It, it's basically a war machine that's built for a war it can't fight in. So without further ado, here's a quick breakdown of the build. Alright, so as you know, it's a very, very large vehicle, and so for the quad track, I've gone with these armoured tracks. They're the biggest and heaviest of the lot, and weighing in at 1.2 tonnes each. They also have 500 points of structure, meaning they are actually very good defensively. They're not going to come off very easily, um, except for maybe side rams, which is why I've added these bits of armour here. They help to just take the hit instead of the track, um, but they do come off in a single hit. After all, combined, they only have about 50 hit points. Uh, but with the fence pieces, they can take some damage from bullets 
quite well, so they do stand up quite effectively. Now at the front here, we've got these blade wings, which are very good for resisting damage, and behind that is actually a truck door, which has 90 points of structure. Some of the strongest pieces, strongest and heaviest pieces, in fact, that you can use. Now, as I've said, there, this is a Wyvern cabin, or a Wyvern cabin, and it's not the ideal one for this, unfortunately. It looks nice, it really does look the part when you're talking about, you know, tanks. But it really doesn't have the en base energy or the power to really get this going. In fact, without the engines mounted at the back here, it doesn't move at all. So <laughs> it really is kind of lacking for power. With a truck cabin, of course, you can increase your mass limit all the way to 20 tons. And you don't need those powerful engines until you start adding armor onto it. So it really is quite alright on its own already. Now, you might have noticed that, yeah, with this only having 10 points of energy, I needed 12 in order to get this working, because I needed to put the powerful engines on there. So, in order to get that, I've actually installed... I'm just going to move everything out of the way here. I've actually put in a hazardous generator. Now, I could have put the heavy generator, but the reason I didn't is because the additional weight would be far too much, and this is far more compact than that one is, even though it provides the same amount of energy. So, I've gone for that instead, and that actually provides a really significant weak spot for the vehicle. If you take a hit to the side over here, it has a chance of actually detonating the generator, which deals a lot of damage. 700 damage, in fact. The splash radius is not very big, but it's right next to the cabin, so it's going to hurt you pretty badly. In addition, it could actually take out the main cannon up here as well. So, not the ideal placement, but we are kind of lacking for space in something this large. So, underneath the engines over here, I'll just show you exactly why we're lacking for space. Because underneath here are four ammo packs. And that's the main reason we have as much ammo as we do. It's still not enough, though. And if we had expanded ammo packs, those would definitely work very well here instead. Uh, instead of the four individual packs. The fuel barrel being here as well is just mainly because this was designed as a PvP vehicle. As well as the radio over here just to help provide a little bit of protection for the engines and prevent it from being damaged straight away. And of course it does help with gaining resources, apparently, in uh, PvP. Now I've not verified that for myself, but apparently that's the case. Having more white common items on your vehicle does actually help there. And of course the spoiler at the back here, aside from giving us 2% uh, reputation gain... It also does help with downforce, because of course a vehicle of this large does actually need that, or it will end up flying, of course. So, yeah. The main structure of it is actually made of truck doors, so that actually provides us with a lot of structure points to work with. And it does protect the internals of the vehicle very, very well. In fact, in a number of matches that I've taken it to, I've never seen the structure of the tank actually get damaged. This main structure has always stayed intact. The front, however, does actually uh, occasionally take some serious damage, especially if that generator goes off. But the rear part of it stays intact pretty much all the time because of just how much hit points it has. And because of the uh, fence pieces around the outside negating a lot of the shots that come at it. Especially if bots are using machine guns, it actually does help to prevent a lot of damage reaching the center. And of course the rear has another truck door on this. Now if I had the parts limit for it, I would definitely be putting fence pieces on here just to give it that extra armor. But at the moment it's not really necessary. And of course this is double layered, so any shots from the rear are not likely to penetrate all the way through. It will require a couple of shots at least. Now, this is a very, very maneuverable vehicle for its size, mainly because the tracks uh, do allow it to have a very high turning rate. Of course, in real life, that probably wouldn't work. Uh, a quad tracked vehicle would need some serious differential work to actually be able to pivot as this one does. However, it is actually still very maneuverable, and that is to our advantage because of the fixed 88mm cannon. And, of course, the Cricket 17 being mounted where it is uh, doesn't actually have a lot of movement range, but then again, it doesn't actually need it. If we actually have a look at the arcs, it there are very limited angles where it can't fire at. So it's actually quite okay being there, and when we're hitting at something mid-range, so the idea being that the cannon would open up the armor for the cricket to deal damage, it actually is m much better at mid-range than it is at short range. So you do definitely want to keep yourself in cover for that. So overall, it has a good sort of setup for PvP, uh, surprisingly, but it really is just in a power score that's not conducive for that. And at this stage, we're probably not likely to see that yet uh, outside of Leviathan mode, which is a little bit disappointing. 
Um, but for, for now, this is all we can really do with it. Uh, I was hoping to be able to build the Mammoth Tank, but we shall consider this Mammoth Tank Mark 1 for now. And uh, we'll leave it at that, and hopefully one day we'll be able to finish this off properly and have a proper go at making a proper Mammoth. And that will of course be Mammoth Mark 2, and as the CNC fans know, that probably has a railgun on it or something, which is um, not possible yet in the game, but hopefully one day we can. But yeah, so if you've enjoyed the build, don't forget to leave a like. And comment down below what are your thoughts on heavy tanks and heavy vehicles in Crossout actually are like. Uh, what are you expecting to see at Endgame? And hopefully, uh, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Panzer. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.